So as we come into the greenhouse, we can see we've got a lot on the floors. Uh, we've got some soil mixes. We got a bag of perlite, another bag of perlite from Firebrand Direct. Uh, there's some worm castings down there on the floor. Um, that's a bag of pumice that we could use. So there's some uh, potting mix, some succulent and bonsai potting mix. Cacti and the two trees from the raffle. One, there was one in the raffle, the other one that I bought. But we've got lots of stuff dotted around. We've got all the pots underneath. We've got some spare space here, which is going to be for the uh, the boxes of bits that I just, you know, the day-to-day -day wire seeds, the uh, extreme garden pouches. Uh, there's a couple of uh, roses there that somebody asked me to get I got them I just need to obviously speak to you about uh, how much they are and getting them across if you still want them I believe it was Mark um, so these are going to go in and underneath the table down here we'll get uh, the other bits out of the way we'll try not to let the water drop this is going to be the soil box so we'll take that outside can see that we've got a soil bin with some soil in so we'll transfer that soil into the soil box so it's got a cover on it and uh, we'll mix up some of the pumice and the perlite and the the other soil etc and get it all transferred across and we'll put the the house plant potting mix in for a bit of uh, organic material also which will you know it'll help with the um, mycorrhiza fungi that we'll be putting in amongst the roots so we'll start off by getting the smaller bag of perlite the worm castings will get into the mix and i think the pumice will get in as well um, then we've got some of the horticultural red flame and then there's lots of stone and other mixes and uh, active substrates for uh, for ponds etc which are ideal for using in uh, potting soil just looking up the back here you can see we've got some growth there on the uh, the tree that was rescued from the bin we don't seem to have a great deal coming off the trunk but um, we do have some fresh growth coming from the root base which I'm assuming they are some suckers we've got all the weeds to pull out and we'll sort that out and then obviously there's all the other pre bonsai trees that really need some work and doing that before we close down for the winter uh, the orange tree continues to do well the lemon tree needs a bit of a trim the avocado is growing really well we'll be doing some sort of trunk chop or something on that at some stage you can see I've got the the red flame um, stones in the bottom of that in the soil mixture and you can see I've got it in quite a few of the other trees that are, that are all doing quite well to be fair so let's uh, get our soil bags and mixes get them outside and start getting mixed up going to start with this Firebrand Direct which uh, I got for a, a nominal figure which came through and we'll get that sifted through. It's a bit windy so some of this is going to blow everywhere. It comes in a nice locked bag so you're able to seal it back up afterwards. That's so you might want to uh, wear a mask or 
don't hold your breath when you're sieving this because um, you don't really want to be breathing it in. I'll just push Pete out of the way. I don't want him breathing it in. So I'm going to use my scoop just to scoop some bits in and then we can sift all the fine particles out and then drop the larger particles into the bin, the soil bin. And the less that we put in, the, the quicker it is to sieve. So the temptation is to fill it and have so much in there, but the less you put in, the quicker the fines fall out of the bottom. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword sometimes, and it's a case of trying to get it just right. So you're sifting enough, but not too much. The first sieve that we did, I obviously did too much, but now, this sieving is nice and easy and we get just the right size particles for bonsai. And then all the fines, the extras that are in this blue bin, I'll use in the, uh, the vegetable gardens and the where the bonsai, pre-bonsai trees are at the moment over there as uh, additives for the soil. Yep, it's a, a good windy day, everything flying all over the place. So this, um, this perlite was being sold on Amazon. So that is all of the bag of that perlite and then we've got some worm castings here <coughs> which will add for organic mix so we'll put plenty of that in We'll get our hands into this and give it a good mix. As Tom would say, don't be scared to get your hands dirty. It's part of the process. So we've got, you can see all the perlite mixing in with that other soil. The worm castings are in there. There's some potting soil in there and it's not a bad mix this. There's, some vermiculite from where we had a, a mix of vermiculite previously this is going to be a, a nice nice mix it's a little bit damp i think i must have got some water in it at some stage hopefully it will dry out a little bit but it's dry enough and the particles are loose enough to easily use it for our potting soil so we'll be able to use this and uh, We'll just go and have a look now and see if we can uh, add anything else to this mix. Hey, Paul, Paul, you want to get something to eat? Come on then. Oh, I know. Is that nasty Pete chasing you around? Yeah, I know. Big nasty Pete. So we've got the big bag of perlite, which I think we won't break into just yet. We'll move it down into this corner and we will use the pumice on the next mix. So the pumice and the soil mix will go into the next mixes. We've got a bit of soil there and a bit of soil back out there. So I'll take out the plastic pots and the netting that we use for our drainage screens and we'll put this big bag of 
perlite down the side and then maybe we can put the pumice on top of that and then our boxes of materials the Kyoto moss spores that we'll be doing shortly that uh, Tom sent us so we'll get that put there and then we've got our little basket our little hamper basket which has got some tools and stuff in there we'll get that and put that under there as well it's very very windy uh, and what we do have for our mixture is I've slowly been saving up the eggshells there's, there's about 24 eggshells in there all crushed up they don't go very far do they but there they are and we'll just drop them into the mixture and we'll give them a give them a good mix in is it good stuff Pete we're good to go so a little bit of mixing and then this is going to be some nice mix to go forward plenty of organic in the mixture to go in with the perlite and the clay particles that uh, that we use as a standard mix but I do like adding in the organic part as well and that will definitely help when it comes to uh, adding the mycorrhiza into the uh, into the roots of anything that we plant up right Let's get that underneath the bench. You can see the horse chestnut has lost most of its leaves. The sticky buds are there ready for the seasons to change. And there we go, the soil is away and underneath. We've got obviously the standard stuff that's been at the side of our working area, our turntable. We've got the pots that Tom got for us. But I think we need to put these somewhere available for use. Comes with some drainage screen in there. And get rid of as much of the packaging as we can. So we'll because we are struggling for space in here um, just looking at the temperatures I did reset the high and low uh, in here so from maybe 36 hours ago our lowest temperature has been 11.8 um, and the highest has been 27.5 and our automatic heater is set to come on when the temperature hits 12 degrees so it says it's 13.9 at the moment on the ink bird but yet we're 15.8 further forward in the greenhouse and it probably gets a bit cooler as we go to the back which is fine because it's you know not getting as much natural sunlight etc so we'll just sort these pots out get rid of the packaging and uh, these pots are going to be used for the succulents various succulents we need to clear this top shelf because i'm going to take that down and put a couple of uh, metal brackets with maybe some scaffold boards like i've said before this is just slightly too high and you know it's a bit awkward to get in at things so i've got to work on the trees that are up there and uh, get them you know onto the display racks somehow um, I'm running out of room and it's scary to think that all the aces are all out there the apples are all out there you know there's all the trees you can just about see the catalpas in the corner of Kay's greenhouse there um, 
you know if I wasn't borrowing Kay's space I'd have nowhere to be so there's a lot of work that we need to do to trim things up and then get some storage towards the back and you know on these shelves as well so with all that in mind all the work that we've got to do no more procrastinating no more putting things off let's get stuck in and uh, I've already moved some equipment away from uh, the the stage over there so the the raffle tree juniper is in where the blue jacaranda was and the one that I bought that he worked on that Corin worked on is down there also so the blue jacaranda is in a plastic pot and it's a little bit of a semi cascade uh, we could potentially make that a more of a cascade as we go along um, but if we try to keep it in this pot it's just about weighted enough to pull itself over so I've got this clay cascade style pot which I was given for my good deeds it was absolutely covered in scale build up of uh, lime or calcium deposits and I've managed to get it as clean as I can uh, there's still lots of little white bits on there um, what I did was uh, I put it in a solution of white vinegar and water and then you can just rub it off I think I've maybe gone a little bit too heavy on the scrubbing and the rubbing um, but the pot looks pretty nice pretty good and it's certainly going to serve us for putting this blue jacaranda in so the first thing that we're going to need to do is put a bit of screen at the bottom of the pot so something like that will do it and we'll save the rest of that and we'll drop that into the bottom of the pot and that's sat in there just right and then if we pull out our soil we can get a base layer of soil into that pot so we don't want to be doing too much work on the roots of this tree with it being uh, November now but you can see that it grew it died there and then it regrew out of there it died back with that little stub there and then it's continued to grow ever since then and because it's grown in a cask cascade fashion it's um, the branches have come and gone up so we couldn't have asked for much better than that we've got no downward growth um, it's not in a, a bad way at all so all I'm going to do is get this out of this plastic pot which hopefully won't be too much of an issue doesn't seem to want to come out it's not root bound underneath into the pot so it's probably just got tight in the in the pot having been in there for quite a while so we'll just give it a little bit of a squeeze and then try and pull it out and there we go so all the roots had got stuck to the side of that plastic pot and you can see there's quite a few in there so we'll just rake out the top layer and just see what we've got down to the Nabari level of the roots so hopefully you can see this quite well I don't want to create too much of a mess but we're going to end up taking quite a bit off I know we are but it'll be okay in here in this greenhouse and the temperatures that uh, this bonsai area is so we don't need to panic too much we'll give it a little bit of a rake out at the bottom here just to free up the roots 
and then we'll just work it and see what we've got so there's quite a lot of lengthy roots which are naturally coming off which is fine and then we've got a little bit of matted up section here which is okay so we'll just work with what we've got there's a drainage screen there from when it was a seedling so that's that's out so we'll um we'll just look to see what roots we've got that's our level there we've got some interesting roots in here a bit of wisping around it seems to twist and do some interesting things but um, all I'm going to do is cut that bottom level of root off and uh, we'll come back to this at a later date when uh, when it's better time for replanting but these roots should should recover just fine so if we just have a look at how we can get these in and we probably want to plant to about that height here so we'll just get some of our soil and tip that in and we'll just use the rake to work into those gaps that are down the bottom So this pot will be nicely weighted to allow the tree to sit in it without trying to pull itself over, hopefully. And uh, if it is still weighted enough to try and pull itself over, we can always add a stone or something on top. And then worst case scenario, we can tie the pot down onto the bench that we place it on. So we can allow the trunk to lean over now and work the soil into the roots and that is going in really well really really good feels really nice and tight in the pot I think we're going to be okay with this one we're going to pot it so it's just so that the root base is just into the pot and then uh, we can lift it in future when we come to repot it and sort the roots out even further So our mixtures flowed into those roots quite well. That's going really nice that, should be absolutely fine. We'll just pat the soil in, absolutely fine. And it's no longer needing to be supported at this side so that's really nice and happy uh, all we want to do now is take off some of these lower branches little bits of growth that are inside the curves I did have some better scissors for this but we'll go with this for now we'll just take that baby branch off and then 
we've got quite a few that one's going back into the tree and we'll just take the that slightly lower one down we're not going to take off too much everything seems to be able to get its own light so we, we could put a bit of wire on that and make it cascade further down the height of this probably wants to be reduced somewhat let's just see if we can get a bit of wire onto that so because we're working on the trunk we'll push our wire into the soil and then we'll come around the trunk we'll just take this dead part away that's interfering with us and then we can continue with our wire across the branch nice flowing angle of wire each time just try and uh, get the wire to flow nicely in between the the foliage it's a can be a bit of a an issue especially with these longer foliage trees oh well we've probably gone far enough with that just snip the wire off and then we can bend our cascade tree into the position that we want So we'll leave it at that. I can see a lot of branches that I kind of want to remove and messing about with them. We've agitated and upset far too many of the branches. Um, we'll see what we get and we see how it goes on. We've got the main branch line going up and then it, as it works away, it goes up and up, but our main trunk is in that cascade style there are a couple of branches that i will just trim off trim back because they don't look the healthiest and the nicest and then we can give it a good water should flow out of the bottom of the pot nicely through our uh, well draining mixture you can see that the the water's flowing nicely through so that's our blue jacaranda now in its cascade pot lots of work still to do but we'll uh, we'll allow it to hopefully recover from that little bit of work we've just done and we'll see how we get on <laughs> 